science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it and eventually, if there's an enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. <laughs> the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. How much freedom do you give them? What happens if you form a bond of trust with them? Watch and see what understanding their true nature can do for you. Come with us on a journey as we do more than examine a parrot's world. We live in it. Make some popcorn and bring in a few wood blocks. Let everyone have something to chew and a comfortable place to perch. Cockatoot is a presentation of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Hi, and welcome to Cockatoos, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 89, our approach to parrot first aid. Right, Seesaw? Hey, Pete Taz. Hey, Pete Taz. Are you nuzzling me there, Pete? Well, first, a little housekeeping. We're going to cover first aid in general in this episode, and our patrons' full version will also include a section describing actual emergencies with some of our birds. Um, Peaches with her impacted feathers, uh, which ended up in surgery eventually. Uh, Sugar's blood loss. Yeah? When she was suffering from feather destructive behavior. And an incident where Coco started choking on peanut butter. Okay? So, please... I know, Lucy, I know. Yeah, I know. Yep. That's right, Pete. That's right, Lucy. Honk. 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 You tell him. You tell him. Yeah. So please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Chloe Sanctuary. Uh, patrons get our full episode at high resolution, no advertisements, and three special segments. Peach's training tips, Cecil's cool things found, and Pippa's news and world report. Right, Cecil? They also get that special satisfaction of supporting our birds and our edu edu supporting our birds and our educational fun videos. Right, Pippa? Right, Pippa? Yeah, see, Pippa agrees. Also want to mention that PayPal and Mighty Cause, that used to be Razu, donors who donate at least $24 a year also get these perks. Thank you, patrons and donors, for making these videos possible. First of all, first aid is first aid, okay? That doesn't mean it's a way to avoid going to your avian vet. There are times when first aid can be the only solution. That's all you need to do. But that's kind of rare. Um, the more you know, though, the more you study and learn, the less rare it is. Uh, because you may be able to handle some of these things yourself. But 
For most of us, it means solving a temporary situation, getting your bird down to the vet and getting it double checked and make sure that everything is cool, okay? Or you have a real emergency where your bird could die, you're going to make sure that your bird's going to have the best chance of getting to the vet safely. Okay? So first aid is first aid. And when in doubt, get to the vet. Okay? Do whatever you need to handle a situation in the short term and then get to the vet. And it's got to be an avian vet. Your average vet on the street doesn't know much about birds, okay? They really aren't qualified to work on them. I know some of you out there are in situations where you don't have a local avian vet, and what that really means is you've got to do some study. I would suggest getting the Basava manual for citizen birds um, and studying that. Uh, also, if you don't have an avian vet around, you can get clinical avian medicine. There is some dubious stuff in there, as in if you... Ignore the entire section on homeopathy. Homeopathy is bogus. It's pretty scientific. It was came up the guy that came up with that came up with it when we didn't have medical science. Okay, it has no basis in fact. So, but the rest of it's good. The only problem with clinical avian medicine is that it it's got everything in there. Everything from hornbills to your average three-toed bird outside to you name it, ostriches, emus, um, we don't deal with those. Where the Basama Manual, the British Small Animal Veterinary Association Manual, uh, just deals with citizens. So you're just talking parrots, okay? Um, now, as far as first aid, two things you should have. You should have your avian vets schedule handle, hand, the phone number, okay, and the info... As far as the address and the phone number and all that should be in your smartphone if you have one. If you don't, it's time to come out of the cave, folks, and get one, okay? Because they can be really helpful. Let's say that if you're heading to the vet and you've got a smartphone, I know this is true of the of Apple phones, okay? Uh, if you're running a decent piece of GPS software like TomTom, Tom, and there's a roadblock up ahead, that... That will actually help you get around it. It'll tell you that you have an accident up ahead, and to, it'll give you a route around it. But if you're going there just going on your knowledge and using a Thomas Brothers or whatever to get to your vet, you should never have to do that. But if you're doing that and there's a problem, you could be stuck on the road. It could be the difference between life and death, and that's not just true with birds. Um, hi, Peppa. Can you preen your head a little bit there? That one looked like it needs some preening. Yeah, yeah, okay. Presenting, she's presenting her head for preening here. She does have a couple of feathers that really need it. She's not letting any other birds do it, so. I've got that job, don't I, Pippa? Also, you should have an alternate. So if you have, we actually have, Dr. Jenkins is our main vet, okay. Um, then there's Dr. Loudis and Encinitas, he's a great vet. He's our number two for major things like surgeries or anything that's really complicated. If it's something that's not so complicated, then we have Discovery Valley Animal Hospital. Um, I mean, he's, he's good, but he's not going to be doing or taking tumors off of, of um, livers or things like that. Okay, so there, But the thing is to have an alternate, too, in case your bed happens to be on vacation. You should have somewhere else you can go in an emergency. So that's really important as far as this is all part of the first aid thing, knowing all that. You should have reliable friends you can call to assist you. People you can trust to come with you to the vet uh, and help you with doing first aid, such as they're not going to be freaking out if they have to hold a bird that's been toweled so that you can pull the blood feather. Okay, and if there is a blood feather situation, you will be doing that. And the reason... What are you guys doing up there? Be good now. That's, that's all right. Cecil, he's, he's a gentleman. I haven't had to keep an eye on him too much. I don't like Snowball, boy, I tell you. And I haven't told you who's in the room with us today. We have Pippa. We have Peaches, of course. And we have Lucy. This is her first time sitting away from me. She seems to be okay, as far as in the video. We have Cecil with us. And we have Lorelei and Coco over there in the training festival. We have 
Salamander, who's turning away from us right now. I don't know what you're doing up there, Salamander. Oh, scratching your head, okay. And we have Sugar. And again, for those of you who haven't watched our videos before, I will be preening peaches down below the neck where you're not supposed to because she can't preen herself. And uh, she almost died from some infection she got from impacted feathers. So I have to preen her pretty constantly to make sure those feathers don't get impacted again. A lot of feathers on a bird. You don't want a bird. In the, unless you're highly dedicated, you don't want a bird that you're going to have to preen like this. You don't want to do it because you don't want them to get territorial. Okay, but we have lots of other videos on that. Okay. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening in every day special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries. It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures, Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild, special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peach's happy face. So have somebody you can trust and get them in situations where you're going to pretend like your bird needs to have a blood feather pulled, okay? So you can be... You and your friend can be prepared to deal with that situation. Now, they may not always be around, so, you know, if you're going to get a few alternates and just make sure they're going to be able to handle it. You don't want somebody who's, like, chewing their nails going, what am I going to do? What are you doing, Coco? Oh, you're going to poop on the floor? That figures. Okay. So, you want somebody who can stomach blood and stomach situations that are not, you know, the best. Uh, where are you going, Coco? Crazy bird. You're dangling. That's great, Coco. I don't know if our camera catches that. I don't think it's gonna I don't think we're at the right angle to catch that. She's dangling off the perch. Silly bird. Coco, you're being silly. What are you doing? There's other ways to do this, you silly bird. Now you're going to watch uh, you're gonna you're going to want to watch Dr. Burkett's Avian First Aid. You can get that First Aid DVD from Birdie Boutique. Um, I think it's also available on Amazon. I think he has it up there too, but it's Dr. Burkett. He's the one that has the Birdie Boutique online where you can buy stuff. But that DVD on, on First Aid is something you should watch. Um, not just watching this particular video, but you should watch that because he really, goes, he really goes through what you can and can't do, okay? So that's important. And again, if you can, you know, see it through to getting the uh, a copy of the Basadla Manual for Citizen Birds, which is on you know, dealing with health issues and the physiology of these birds, you should, so you know what you're doing. At least you have a general idea of what you're doing, or you can look up something if you have time. 
Like you're driving down to the vet, and it's an hour drive, and you got the person there watching the bird and also looking something up in your in the Basama manual to learn more as you're dealing with the situation. Because sometimes things come up that you're not prepared for, and there's always going to be things like that. Try to prepare for everything, though. Um, I know. Things. Yeah. Things you should have on hand: hydrogen peroxide. Now, it's not a disinfectant, okay? It's for cleaning. So, uh, if you have a bird that, say, has a blood feather that's broken and there's blood all over the... <laughs> Lucy, are you sure about that? Then you use that to clean it up. Or you've got a bird that gets blood on its... <laughs> Hydrogen peroxide is good for cleanup. Okay. Um, we put it... No. Okay. All right. Do you want to come over here? Is that what you want? No? Well, what are you yelling about then? You can come over here if you want to. You want to come over here? No. Okay. So, we put it in a spray bottle. Clearly mark hydrogen peroxide on the outside so somebody doesn't think it's water and spray it. Uh, you don't want to get that in anybody's eyes. Obviously, hydrogen peroxide is not good in your eyes, so keep it away from your bird's eyes and away from their mucous membranes, all right? And this is what we do, by the way. We can't tell you what to do. These are things that we do. We, we're suggesting this stuff, as in we have the Basava Manual. We have the <laughs> DVD. We, these are things we do, okay? Other things you... Other things you should have, Q-tips, they help you clean things. Uh, flossers, those little plastic flossers. You want the one that has the smooth rounded edge on the bottom that you normally get up to get between your teeth. They're great for cleaning out nares. They get feather dust, especially like this situation, even with HEPA filters running most of the time, obviously not while we're doing videos, but even in these situations, there is a they get the dust into their nares and you have to clean it out, so we use a flosser for that. Cotton bandages, you know, the material and the tape. It, one inch wide is probably best, and you can wrap it around if they, if they, you know, something happens and they're bleeding on their legs or something like that, their feet, you can tape it up. And then along with that, you need an e collar. They call it an Elizabethan collar that you can put around their neck. To keep them from, which usually you put the opposite way you would with a dog or a cat if you have it facing down. So, are you sure? You are? Okay. Yeah? Well, I've offered to get you over here, but you don't want to. You just haven't. Hello, Peach. So, that way you'll keep them from removing. You know, tape and Well, come over here. If you're going to scream, come over here. Come on. Sit up on my shoulder. Come on. Then you won't scream. You won't scream if you're up there. I know. Uh, thread. And if you, you can use that to seal off um, like a bleeding follicle. Um, and we talk about that when we're... In the, uh, in the full video when we're talking to our patrons about um, what happened to peaches. But anyway, so you might want to have thread around. It is one way that you can tie off things, okay? You should have super clot. It's much better than styptic. You know, styptic may stop the bleeding. It's the stuff that people put on their face to um, stop bleeding when they're, they're shaving. But it isn't a disinfectant. And it doesn't have any uh, painkiller in it. <clears throat> Super clot is all three. So you reduce the chance of infection and you get rid of the pain. Yeah, you know, it works. the stuff works great. Don't expect it to work on a blood feather. Okay? If you've got somebody bleeding from a blood feather, you're not going to put Super clot on the brake and expect it to stop bleeding. That's like putting. Um, Scotch tape on a ho on your hose outside when you have a leak in your hose. You're trying to water the lawn. Not gonna work, okay? Bobaloo? Hello, Bob. 
Hello, Bob. Kisses, Bob. Kisses. Good boy, Babalu. I have seen the joy in Babalu's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Babalu love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. Good boy. Kisses? Kisses? Good boy. My heart nearly broke the day. I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse. That his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries, and eventually, Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. Babalu. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> Don't use flour or cornstarch. Um, there's a number of reasons for it. Dr. Burkett in his video says, don't bring me a birdie biscuit. Um, but really think about it. Flour and cornstarch, when you add liquid to them, will attract bacteria. Is that what you really want to do? And I know that people on the internet are always touting, well, I use flour. Well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You don't use flour and you don't use cornstarch because they can attract bacteria. You really don't want a wound that's attracting bacteria. Okay, you wouldn't put it on your arm, would you? Cornstarch especially is sweet and it's going to attract you know, bacteria, so no, don't do it. So, super clot. You can buy it from Amazon, has it available, and you can buy it from Amazon. So, you need a magnifying glass? Something to magnify so you can look. If you've got a bird that's wounded, you want to be able to see what's going on, okay? And that's another reason that's nice to have a friend that can come over because they can hold the bird while you're using the magnifying glass after you've cleaned the area with hydrogen peroxide to see what's happened, okay? It's important to clean the area before you use the magnifying glass because you don't want to be looking through a whole bunch of blood or if there's poop that's covering the area, you know, they may have stepped in poop or something and their foot's bleeding. So you want to be sure that you have the area clean when you're using the magnifying glass, okay? Uh, you want to clean towels so that if for some reason, you know, you have to take the birds off, you can sit them on clean towels where they, where they can kind of stay warm in the towels. Um, you want paper towels and cotton balls. Um, that's all for you know, cleanup. Um, cotton balls can be used to to clean off blood. You know, so if you've got an area that's bleeding, you can take the cotton balls and spray a little hydrogen peroxide on them, on them and wipe off the area. Tweezers, if you have to get something out, you know, sometimes they'll actually get a. It's, it's happened where they can get a little sliver in their foot or something. Not common, but it does happen. Or if there's something caught in their nares, you can pull it out with the tweezers. Um, hemostats, obviously, uh, those are used for pulling blood feathers out. And blood feathers are not something that you want to go, well, my bird just broke its blood feather, it's bleeding, so I'm going to take it to the vet. You don't have time. You need to know how to do that. We do have, um, we have covered that in one of our videos. I'll see if I can link to that in our show notes. But you want to know how to remove the blood feather yourself with a hemostat. Um, 
that will definitely teach. That's one way you can save your bird's life. And, uh, they can bleed out fast. They don't have a lot of blood. These guys are built to fly, okay? So they're they lean on blood. They're lean on, on on anything that will make them heavier. And liquids are pretty heavy. So. Oops, I'm sorry, Peach, but I got a feather. See, I got it. One of those feathers that could get impacted. And it's not optional. You need to know how to use them. Okay? You've got a bird that's got a blood feather and it's bleeding out. You need to pull that feather. When you do pull it, unless there's something desperately wrong, we'll talk about that in the patron side of this video. Unless there's something desperately wrong, just pulling that feather is going to stop it. Because when you pull it properly, which is slowly, okay, until it pops out, it has a natural valve action and shuts off. Where if it's bleeding from the feather, it's not going to stop. You know, it's just not going to stop if it's bleeding out of the feather. So You need a hospital cage for transport. A cage where you've got towels in it ready to go. Okay. It's your ba it can be your basic travel cage that you normally use. And that's perfectly fine. But just have towels stacked in it and just in case you run into the situation. Um, a little medical kit to go with you. In case something else happens on the way, you never know, right? And be sure to take some super pot with you. Um, so, just the basic medical kit. The items I mentioned before will work. Um, you should have some eye wash. You know what they use for contact lenses? The it's basically just a light saline solution, and it'll say saline solution on it. If you read the label, it'll usually say it has a little boric acid. It's what people with soft contacts use to rinse off their contacts. They rinse off their contacts, and then they put them right back in their eye. So this works fine with these birds. But you can ask your vet to be sure. Uh, if your bird gets something in its eye, you want to flush it out. That's a good thing to flush it with. If, of course, if that happens, you still want to go to the vet. You need syringes to provide water. Uh, 60 milliliter syringes are the best way. And it has a fairly large opening. Not that, it's not that large, but you know, you're talking something that you can put right up to the bird's beak and squirt water in there. Um, we talked about the necessity of that in some situations in uh, the patron version. Um, and you want to make sure that while you're taking, if your bird is sick in any way, shape, or form, and it's trying to fight to survive. The warmer you can get it, the better. So if you have your car at about 85 degrees, your car, your van, whatever, at about 85 degrees, you're going to help that bird because it's not going to have to use energy to heat its body. Um, they, can, they can handle that 85 degree temperature with no problem. Keeping in mind, though, if you if it's 60 degrees in your house and you take them out to an 85 degree car, they may have trouble breathing. You shouldn't you shouldn't ever take them from. Okay, I can't. You're gonna have to move. She's grabbing my ear. I gotta sit up straight. I'm leaning to one side. I'm listing, little girl. I'm listing. Yeah. Laurel, I don't get too into that over there, kid. If you've got more than a 15 degree shift in temperature from where you are to where they go, that's too much at one time. You can slowly raise the temperature. If you're in a house that's 60 degrees and you can get out there in the vehicle and warm it up slowly from 60 to 65 to 70 to 75 to 80, get it as warm as you can. A sick bird needs the warmth to keep its, you know, so it doesn't have to use its own energy to stay warm. Have an area ready for any emergencies, and make sure that you've taken your bird there and it's comfortable there. And if you have an area ready for emergencies, but the bird's never been in that spot, it's, you know, just, it's not the best for the bird, okay? You might be really freaked out by what you're doing. Practice what you're going to do and rehearse it, okay? Approach all situations as if you're a paramedic and getting your bird proper care on the way to the hospital. Act like a professional. Fall apart emotionally when it's over. I'm great. I kind of naturally do that myself. 
If possible, hand off the job of calling the vet to a friend that's helping you. Concentrate on dealing with the emergency. Blood loss can be life-threatening, so stop the bleeding, even if you need to use a tourniquet or a compress. Superclot is great, but it won't stop arterial bleeding. Um, dog or cat bite, clean the wound with hydrogen peroxide, apply superclot, go straight to the vet, because those guys are nasty. Those dogs and cats have nasty mouths, okay? Straight to the vet for antibiotics. Stay focused, stay as calm as possible. The bird will pick up on panic, too, so stay calm. Well, that's all for our public video. Become a patron and get the full video at www.patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary. And thanks for watching. Do you want to say goodbye to the people? That was it? Goodbye? Is that what you said? Is that what Lucy said? Lucy. A little goosey girl. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. To science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower.